And now let's get ready for a great time, guys. Your trainer and coach today is Joe Stump. You may be one of the 350,000 realtors who have already met Joe at one of his three-day main event training seminars that he's delivered around the country over the last 20 years. Or you may be meeting him for the first time today. Either way, you're in for a training that will get you real results. It is my pleasure to introduce Joe, who has become a master at neuro-linguistics. Neuro That's, I'm not, I'm Canadian, okay? <laughs> Programming. This is what he calls his magic words. And today he'll give you the language you need to grow your business through finding and getting and selling listings. Joe has spent his life dedicated his career to teaching real estate professionals how to run a predictable, reliable business. And whether this is your first year of business or your 15th year of business, you probably know that language skills are critical to a predictable, reliable business. Your business can live or die by what you say or fail to say. Joe has been teaching real estate professionals how to run their business primarily by referral and referrals received by way of words, magic words. He teaches what to say, when to say it, and exactly how to say it so that you get the results you want, a high quality referral. Today he's going to help you, help you up your level of your language skills and dialogues that will help you find and get and sell listings. Do you know that when the student is ready, the teacher always appears? And you couldn't be in better hands than with this teacher who has appeared for you today in the form of Joe Stump, who is a master trainer and coach to thousands of professionals like you. Please give it up and a warm welcome for Joe Stump. All right, please. give me a nice hand. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Tarbell, thank you. What an incredible culture you have created here t at Tarbell. And I've been in the training and around the training business for the last 30 years. And this is a very unique experience. Can you feel the beautiful spirit in this room right now? Yes, uh, you, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's, it's a spirit that when you leave here, it, it, the room feels empty. So it means it goes with you wherever you go. And that's that Tarbell spirit. And it's, uh, it's extraordinary. And I, I would acknowledge each one of you for the choice that you made to be part of this organization. So why don't you just give the person next a high five and say, good choice for being here. <laughs> yes, 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 good. So I'm going to just take my little... Isn't that nice? I like that. So I'm going to put my little goodies up here. So uh, Tony, Tony did a magnificent job. Did Tony do a wonderful job? Tony, excellent. Great work. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Tony. I, I love his whole thought process around preparation. You know, what he has to do and what you have to do in order to prepare yourself in this new marketplace. And I've been thinking a lot about that whole thought around preparation, how to prepare, how to prepare yourself. And that's what we're doing in the room today is, is what we're preparing ourselves so we can be more efficient, more effective, more productive. And uh, what do I do, uh, like this morning, at 5 o'clock this morning, I start every morning about 4.45, and I start the preparation for the day. And my intention is in that first hour of the day, first hour and a half of the day, is to bring uh, the very best me to the day. So there's a ritual I have that's a spiritual ritual, I have a mental ritual, then I have a physical ritual. And part of my physical ritual is I meet with my trainer, his name is Robert Budd, down at Isaiah Training Center, and we swing kettlebells. Anybody know what a kettlebell is? Hey, turn the person next to you and just tell them what a kettlebell is. Make it up if you don't know. Just make it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a kettlebell is a cannonball with a handle on it. All right. And you see them in the gym on the side. You know, they're dusty and they're over on the side. They've been around for a couple hundred years. Uh, in, in Russia, I, uh, you uh, may or may not know this. In Russia, this is what the Olympic athletes for years have been using in order to prepare themselves uh, for their strength training. And so when I was thinking about, you know, how can I be, I love the thought of being in the best physical condition that, uh, today than I've ever been. So I, my intention is always every day wake up and be in better shape than I was the day before. Be that person. So if you're going to be that person, then you have to do what they would do, and then you'll have what they would have. And so part of that is, is I found my way into the kettlebell world. And uh, one of the things I get excited about doing is uh, 
t- you know, further education. So I decided to get a Russian Kettlebell Challenge certificate. And what that requires is that you go through a nine-month training and then do a weekend training uh, with uh, all these athletes from all over the world. Now, I was the oldest guy in the group. 50, I'm 53 years old. All these other guys are all trainers, like fitness trainers from all over the world, all, literally all over there, Brazil, Italy, Australia, all over the world. And we go to uh, La Jolla uh, with Pavla. Pavlo is the Russian instructor. And what he's going to do is take us through the certification process to see if we have prepared to be certified. And so my training started nine months before that. And when I met with Robert, I said, Robert, what do I have to do to make sure that I uh, pass this certification? And isn't that the question you always want to ask? Like when you came here, you probably said to your manager, what do I have to do to make sure that I'm successful? What do I have to do? How do I prepare myself? And so I asked Robert that question. He says, well, first of all, you have to pay me in advance for all of your training. (laughs) I like that. He says, you know, if you pay me in advance as your personal trainer for the next four months, I know at 5 o'clock in the morning when you're supposed to be here, you'll be here. How many of you recognize that you have to pay the price of success in advance? (laughs) Yeah. So I ponied up, I put the money up front, you know, and then I had to show up every morning. I got to tell you, there was a lot of mornings I wake up at 4.45, I go, if I didn't pay, I wouldn't be there. (laughs) (laughs) So I get there, I get to the training, and then he says, you also have to sign up for the program. The program is going to be in nine months. This is nine months prior, and it's $2,500 to go through this three-day program. And he says, you've got to pay it in advance because I now know if you've got a big reward that you're, or a big target at the end, you'll work really hard to get there. And he says, I'll get you thoroughly prepared uh, if you are really committed to it. And so I said, let's go for it. So it's always important to get somebody in your life that knows where you want to go. They've already been there and they can get you ready to go. Are you following me on that? I, you know, the easiest way to get from where you are to where you want to be is find somebody who's already been there and ask them for help. And so I, I said, help me do that. So he says, okay, let's do that. So w- the most difficult exercise of all is called the snatch. <laughs> I love that name, the snatch. You have to take a 44-pound kettlebell, you know, 20 kilos. You have to swing it between your legs, then you have to pull it up above your arm. So the motion is like this. That's a, that's a swing. And go home and try this tonight with a 44-pound <laughs> bell. <laughs> or if you don't have a bell, find a 44-pound two-year-old, you know, and just do this with them. <laughs> <laughs> just see what that experience is like. So the first time Robert is showing me this, we started out with a 12-pound weight, just a little 12-pound bell. And I could do it about 25 times, and I felt my shoulder was going to fall off. This was the, at the very beginning. And any time you start something new, you want to quit right away. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, so I thought, you know, r- is there any way I can get my money back? <laughs> he goes, no, we're just getting started. So we started the process, and a little bit every week, a little bit every week, you know, it increased in weight, increased in repetitions. And what he was getting me prepared for was the test. See, when we got to La Jolla on August 27th, 28th, and 29th, uh, there's 100 guys there. And the first test in the first 20 minutes is you have to do 100 snatches with a 44-pound bell in five minutes. Yeah, that's what I said. And so uh, I said to Robert, Robert, i got to make sure that I've done this at least two or three times before I get there. Because here's the kicker. If you didn't do it in the first attempt, you were kicked out of the class and you didn't get any money back. That was your agreement. You give them the $2,500, you have to pass the snatch test in the first 15 to 20 minutes or you, you're dismissed from the class and you lose your $2,500. You get to repeat the class, but you don't get, you don't get your money back. Are you following me on this? Yeah. Huge penalty if you don't what? Prepare. Prepare. Everyone say prepare. prepare. You know, so we get there, there's 100 guys there and uh, at the end of the first half hour, 47 were left, which means 53 didn't what? Yeah, they didn't prepare. And I was watching these muscle guys come up, these big giant bodybuilders come up with all those beautiful beach muscles. Ladies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen? <laughs> and, and, and these guys, they couldn't, they, they looked good, but they had no strength and they didn't prepare. And so I was so blessed that I had a coach who knew what I had to do to prepare. And so every morning at 5 a.m., what we were doing was doing the snatches. And then three weeks before the training was there, I got my 100 in in five minutes. And as soon as I did it before the test, I knew I could do it at the test. There's nothing worse than walking into a test and you haven't done it before. Are you following me on this? Oh, man. How many of you ever walked in a listing presentation and you were not prepared? 
You, how many of you ever walked out of a listing presentation and said to yourself, I wish I would have prepared? Yeah, and you can't get that time back. And so what today is going to be about is just preparing you for your next listing presentation, preparing you for your next opportunity to go out and make a difference in somebody's life, getting ready, getting yourself ready to make a difference. I'm going to go um, on October 26th with my daughter. I have a 16-year-old daughter, Olivia, who's uh, taking her driver's test for the third time. <laughs> Okay, she didn't pass the first two times. Now, if you have a 16-year-old kid who does not have their driver's license yet and they're now on the line, you know, like if they don't pass, it's uh, her life is over, <laughs> you know. And so um, what we've been doing to prepare is very different than we did for the first time, two times. See, what we did the first two times is we just prepared to drive, and what happened was Olivia would get in the car, and she knew how to drive, but she didn't know how to be a driver, she knew how to do it, but she didn't know how to be it. Are you all clear on this? So now we're working on being a driver, not doing the driving, because she knows how to drive. She knows all the doing stuff. And what she's been concentrating on is, Dad, I need my license. I have to have my license. I have to have my license. What she's concentrating on the have part. And when I said to her, I said, Olivia, what are the five qualities of a person who is being an extraordinary driver? And she said, and we came up with a list, focused, quick, alert, aware, and responsive. Those were her words. She gave me those words. And so all I've been saying to her every time I'm in contact with her, I said, Olivia, you're the most focused, alert, aware, responsive, and quick 16-year-old I know. When you get in that car, you just look at that instructor and say, you're about to see the most alert, aware, quick, responsive, <laughs> focused 16-year-old you've ever seen. Watch this. <laughs> so I'll let you know on October 26th if this worked. <laughs> If not, I will be taking her to her girlfriend's house for the rest of her life. <laughs> <laughs> so I want her to get the license as much as... <laughs> and I want you to be successful as much as you want to be successful because my future depends on yours. And uh, how many of you believe the next 10 years are going to be better than the last 10? Come on. If, you, if the person next to you doesn't have their hand up, nudge them in the gut and say, get it up. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you know, what we're all counting on is, is that the next 10 years will be better than the last 10 years. We're all counting on that. Actually, that's my future. My future depends on your future. You must have a better 10 years than you had in the last 10 years for me. Because if you're successful, I'm successful. I only prosper when you're successful. If you do not go out and list and sell homes and collect commission checks, you don't pay me. So you want to have a bigger future for me. <laughs> <laughs> Say yes? yes. Okay, I guess I'm agreeing with that. Now, your clients, your buyers and sellers, your borrowers, their future has to be bigger in order to make your future bigger. So what you're really in the business of doing is helping people make their future bigger than their past. So you can have a bigger future. And notice all of your fear in your life. In my life, I've noticed all my fear appears when I think I'm doing it for me. If you have any challenge with creating money or wealth in your life, maybe you have this thought, I don't deserve to make money, or I, I, there's just too many excuses for making money. You know, all the issues around money. Has anybody ever had a bad month? Anybody ever have one of those? <laughs> yeah. Hey, how many of you are meeting some people right now that are having a bad year? Yeah. Or how about a bad decade? <laughs> yeah. you, 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 meet, you meet people who are, are challenged financially and what they're trying to do, do is deal with that issue as opposed to be something different than they've been. Uh, what, what we're going to look at today is, is how do you be, how do you be a person who when you go out to see a homeowner, you're making the decision, are they selling their property or are they listing their property? There's a, there's a key distinction there. There are some people who want to list and there are some people who want to sell. You want to be a person who works with sellers. Say yes? yes. Yeah. And, and you're going to come to the notion, you're going to actually look at properties and you're going to go, oh, that one's just listed. It's not selling, it's just listed. Are you following me on this? And so what I want to outline with you today is a, a discussion that I've been working with for the last couple years in some of our, our coaching sessions. And uh, when you see this, when I want you all to look at every seller that you're working with right now or every listing that you have right now and just put them to this test. 
And what I would love you to do is be a person who works with sellers, not an agent who does listings. Are you, are you clear on this? See, check in with the person next to you. See if they got that thought. Just did you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do I... So, here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a list of the five qualities of a seller versus the qu five qualities of a listing. And then what we'll do is we'll have some fun with this. So let's just take it through. The first one is this. A seller has a very clear deadline, and they know what their five, their six, and their seven is. Now, I'm going to teach you a methodology called five, six, and seven. And I would suggest to most of you that the skill that you want to master in this new economy is how to inspire people, how to get people to act, how to get people to move in the direction of their biggest future, uh, how to get people to stop from delaying, hesitating, and procrastinating. How many of you have clients right now that are sitting on the fence right now? They're waiting. I love what Don said, waiting until November 3rd. You know, they're waiting and they're, they're an anticipating something is outside them going to change so they can do something that they want to do for themselves. And what I'm going to help you do today is deeply understand that once you help a person understand what their five, their six, and their seven is, their true inspiration, they'll take action. Uh, a listing has no clear next step. They're unable to connect with what's important to them. They don't know what's important about selling their home to them. They're, they're not clear on what's inspiring or motivating them. How, how many have ever worked with somebody who was not motivated? What does that do to your inspiration? Yeah. Yeah, it diminishes your ability to want to even help people who don't even want to help themselves. So one of the things we're going to look at today is every one of our current homes that we're representing the seller on is asked, do we know what their 5, 6, and 7 is? And if we don't know what their 5, 6, and 7 is, when this class is over, the easiest thing you're going to do is pick up the phone and say, I'd like to have a meeting with you and just talk to you a little bit about what's important about selling your home to you. And I'm going to show you exactly how to go through that process with them. So what you'll see is inside your kit, I gave you what is called a pre-appointment letter. You'll see this, this letter that I have written, and I've had thousands of agents all over North America use this letter. And, it, and it, almost unanimously, every time somebody uses this letter, and they'll come back to me and say, that has helped me outline specifically and exactly what you know, I want to do when I go out to see a person who wants to sell the property. So I call it a pre-appointment letter. And so this dialogue I've listed on the, in this letter here for you. So as we go through this, I'll put dialogue up on the screen, but no, it's already inside your letter for you. And then I'll go through the letter at the end of our conversation here today. The second one, second point is this, is that sellers have a, a mindset around price. It's always test price. And we encourage you that you look at price in 30, 60, or 90 days. You know, like when somebody says, what's my house worth? The, you know, the answer to that question is, was, well, how much time do you have to sell it? Because that's all that really matters. What's my home worth? Well, we have a 30-day a price. We have a 60-day price. We have a 90-day price. How many of you have homes that are in the market that are on the seven-year price? <laughs> yeah. Or how many of you have seen prices that are the seven-minute price? Everything is a function of time. And so when you're working with the listing, they price it based on what they need and want. You hear a, seller, a, a, a listing go, well, here's what we need to get, or here's what we want to get. And so there's a real distinction there when you look at who am I working with, somebody who is committed to a 30, 60, 90-day price process, or somebody who is trying to get what they want. So I'll give you more insight into that as you go through. The second thought, the third one is they invest in staging. They invest their money in being the best in the marketplace. We like to call it BIC, best in category, the best in that market. And so I really want you to look at all of your listings right now and ask yourself how many of the listings that you have right now are really competing with in that price range as the best in that category versus the listing says, uh, I'm not invite, in, investing. Uh, they make excuses. Oh, you know, we like the, wall, the walls, the color they are. That chartreuse is beautiful. They want to color it their way. They can do it whatever they want. We're not going to touch it. You know, they don't invest in making their property the best in that category. And then the fourth one is they make it easy to show the property. How many of you have ever had a person who made it difficult to see the property? You know, like, you know, I really, really don't want to sign. 
We don't want our neighbors to know we're moving, you know. That makes it difficult. It, when, when somebody says, you know, it's really awkward for us right now to, to uh, show the home on Sundays. And we have our dog, and we don't want our dog, you know, to be disturbed on Thursday nights. Or, you know, how many of you, how, what's the craziest excuse you've ever heard? You, you know that that person saying, I'm going to create an obstacle right now for you to sell this property. And then the fifth one is, is they are empowered to help you get it sold. A seller will help you get it sold. They'll do what it takes to help you get it sold. Where a listing will say to you, they're not interested in doing your job. Now, I just want you to look at these qualities, each one of them. A clear, crystal clear deadline. I mean, they know exactly what they're going to do. So they have a strong motivation to move in the direction of getting it sold. They're completely aligned with testing the price. They're real clear that when you sit with them, you can say to them, here's three different prices for your home. We could get it sold in less than 30 days. We can take between 30 and 60 days, or we can take 90 days. So you pick the price depending on how important it is that you get it sold. And they're clear on that. They will do whatever it takes to get the property so it looks the best in its character, like a model home. That's why model homes sell, is they look like model homes. They, they look like the best in the neighborhood. They make it real easy for you to get access to the property, and they'll do their part. I would love you to get to a point when you're updating your seller and you say to them, here's what happened this week. We, we showed the property on Tuesday. We ran an ad in the local newspaper. I did a mailing. That's what I did. What did you do this week? You want to get to a point where they're engaged in the process of helping themselves reach their five, six, and seven. So now we'll use that as the backdrop for today. That's what we're aiming for. So I'm curious right now, if I went out and looked at all of your inventory that you personally had right now, how many sellers do you have versus how many listings do you have? Why don't you check with the person next to you and just ask them if you were to take each one of the properties that you're currently representing a person, what percentage are listings, what percentage are sellers right now? Yeah. Okay, come on back. Good. Now, now in your kit, what I'd like you to do is, let me just use that for one second. If you take out this letter, it's called the pre-appointment letter. And this presupposes that you have an appointment with a client at Tuesday the 2nd at 4 o'clock. And you want to have a conversation with them in advance of coming out to visit with them. Now, I've taken this letter and I've used it as a script for a video. Some of you could take this and put yourself in front of a camera and just video record this and send a video to the seller saying, before we meet, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what homes sell and which ones are just listed. Is it in your kit? No? Okay. We're about to get you one, all right? Okay. So quickly, we, there's a whole group. How many of you do not have the letter? Would you raise your hand? Okay. How many? Oh, this, look at this. You know what? The bleacher bums, what we decided to do. <laughs> this, this whole section over here did not get one. Michelle, this whole section over here does not have one. Yeah. So can we get a couple people handing them out so we can move quickly on this? Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, we'll get more copies of everybody. So if you have a, the person sitting next to you has a copy, could you pass one down this way so you can all look on to the letter, all right? So just pa if you can pass them on down this way, and then you can look on to the letter with the person next to you, and then we'll get one for everybody. So, so what I'd like you to do is, does everybody looking on to a letter? Okay. Are, you, are you happy about this? Are you frustrated or fascinated? <laughs> there you go. So, Michelle, we can distribute them so they could look on. There you go. Okay, here we go. Just stay with me on this. Now, 
Okay, here it goes. It goes, on Tuesday, the 2nd, at 4 p.m., we'll be meeting at your home to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, which is selling your home in the new marketplace. And I would love you to underline the words, new marketplace. Not the crushing economy. <laughs> Not <laughs> this slow market. You know, what, you, what we want to create is a distinction between old world, new world. We want to invite people into the new world versus talk all about the old world. And in neurolinguistics, it's creating a distinction. So when somebody says, well, I'd like to price it at this point, you go, I could have done that in the old world. In the new world, we have to do it a little bit differently. And so what I'm going to show you is that you're constantly creating distinction between two choices. It's not about listing your home at this price. It's about listing your home at an old world price versus a new world price. And so I, I'll use that distinction, new world, new marketplace. It says, since preparation is always the difference between mastery and mediocrity, I have invested nine minutes preparing, 90 minutes preparing for our, nine minutes, okay, uh, <laughs> for our time together. Would you, uh, would you please make a note there? It's, it's actually creating more value to tell people what you did in advance. Most people don't recognize what you do before you even get there. They assume that you're just ready to go. You wake up in the morning and they call and you, you're, you dash out. They don't know what's happening behind the scenes. And the more you value what you do, the more you tell people what you had to do to prepare for the time that you're going to be together. So what I find is a lot of amateurs do is they'll go on a listing presentation and they'll just walk in and they'll just spill all of the goods as opposed to saying, hey, before we even get started, I just want to let you know what I had to do in order to prepare for this meeting. There's about 90 minutes of preparation. First, I go to the computer and I do all the documentation. I look for comps. I'll make phone calls to other agents, find out how long properties have sold. And in your case, I had to make 16 phone calls. Each phone call took me 15 or 20 minutes to do that. And then I give it to my, are you following me on this? And then the more value you bring, the more they honor the, da the data that you provide. But if you just pull data out and just <laughs> throw it up on them, they have little reverence for it. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is, is revere yourself by giving language to what you do before you present it. And what happens for you is, is you're, you're looked at as somebody who's really a more valuable asset to that particular person. So now this is called preemptive. Whenever you can preempt what you're going to do, tell people what you're going to do, do it and tell them what you did. So at our meeting, at our meeting, we will cover the following items. What's really important to you? The biggest chunk of our time is discovering what is really important to you about selling your home. Now, notice the word. Would you underline the word selling your home, not what? Listing your home. You're going to make a clear distinction to the person you're about to be, meet with is they're either going to list it or they're going to sell it. And you want to be known as the company that sells homes, not lists homes. There's a lot of agents who just list them, but what we do is, is we sell them. And it's a really neat distinction. Uh, because the language in our industry is just listed, and you can go, yeah, yeah, you're right, that's just listed. <laughs> so the biggest chunk of our time is going to be discovering what's really important about selling your home. I will ask you some thought-provoking questions to help you discover what's valuable to you. And I have learned that when your values are clear, your choices are easy. It's a very powerful statement. When you sit with a person and they're having a difficult time making a decision, you could say to them, why you might be making a difficult, uh, difficult to make a decision right now is you're not clear on what's important to you. And the clearer you get on what's important to you, the easier it is to decide what to do next. So let's spend more time on getting clear on what's important to you versus what the offer should be or how much you should list it for, or how much you should price it for, what's really important to you. I'll demonstrate that to you in a minute. Now, maybe, you've already, maybe you're already clear about what you want to achieve, and in that case, experience has shown, I can suggest to you what your best options may be. Now, would you underline the word options? See, there's a big distinction you're going to see is that a typical salesperson, now just th take the word salesperson. Everyone say salesperson. salesperson. Okay, close your eyes and get a picture of a salesperson. Okay, get, now what color, what, what, do they, what do they look like? Turn to the person next to you and describe a salesperson. Yeah, salesperson. Yeah. <laughs> they have a gray suit on. <laughs> they have a what? They have a gray suit on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pound it. <laughs> okay. All right, come on back. Now, that, what, what you want to know is in our culture, 
in the American culture, what's coded in our DNA, in the word salesperson, is a, a low frequency. It's a, a lower vibration. It's just coded that way. It's when we think salesperson, we think con, <laughs> cheat, tin man. tin man, car salesperson. Yes or no? Yep. Guard yourself. You, you, don't be manipulated. That's, that, we just automatically go there. It's, not, it's, it's in our chemistry of who we are. We say, oh, he's a really good salesperson. We go, oh, I don't have the gift for gab. You know, like we go into that direction, like it's, a, it's something that a few people have, and if you have it, oh, you're a good salesperson. And I'm going to suggest to you that a, a more responsive word in your, in your culture would be consultant, would be advisor, to, to make that distinction. When you even think of the word consultant, what, what images come to mind? Yeah, there's more experience behind it. It's more expertise behind it, a little bit more trust behind it. Uh, in between jobs. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's a different feeling to the word consultant, advisor. There's a, so I'm, inside our culture, we refer to ourselves as salesperson. We all understand that. But when you're in front of a client, to say to you, as your real estate consultant, it's very different than saying, as the person going to sell your house as a salesperson. So just get that notion in your, your mind just as, you, as we go through this. So although I have a strong opinion about what's, best for my clients, I always first share with you what I believe are your best options. Now, if you underline the word, and you can see the difference, a typical salesperson will give you their opinion, a skilled consultant will give you your options. And what you'll find is, is when you're sitting with a high quality seller, tell me what my options are. Because when you tell me what your opinion is, it's loaded with what's in it for you. And so, let me share what your options are, and then based on what you believe is important to you, then we'll take a step in the direction of the best option for you. And see, when you go into opinion, it's all about you. It becomes I-centered. Next, um, after we are clear on what's important to you and you know your options, and if I believe I can help you make your dreams come true, I will share with you what I do, how I do it, and who I have done it for. Now, there's a thing, if you write down next to who I've done it for, it's called social proof. It's one of the most powerful ways to influence anybody in our culture. And right now, what's missing is social proof. It's called consumer confidence. When we see one person doing it, it gives us permission to do it. So you'll notice that if you work with a first-time home buyer who buys their first home, and they live in an apartment complex, and they're in connection with the other people who live in that apartment complex, the opportunity for them to introduce you to those people is at an all-time high because by them taking action, it gives everyone else permission to take action. Maybe you've even seen this in some neighborhoods where a home goes up for sale, and there's nothing been for sale in a long time, and then all of a sudden there's two or three listings in that same area. Anybody ever seen that happen before? That's called consumer confidence. If one person does, it gives me permission to do it. Uh, in uh, Dr. Cialdini's book, who wrote a book called Influence, The 50 Ways to Influence People, he talks all about social science, uh, the social science of social proof. And he, he, they did this little study in New York where people were walking by a busy intersection, and he, he got eight people together. And one person would look up, and then they would count how many people would look up, you know, if only one person was looking up. And what they noticed was there's a very small percentage of only one was looking up. Now, they had a group of eight that were standing there just in a circle, ones like this, and they're counting, everybody's going back, and there's a very small percentage. Two started to look up, and the percentage went up. Three started to look up, and the percentage went up. The tipping point was four. When four people were looking up, everyone who walked by looked up. <laughs> so what does that tell you? <laughs> look up, baby. <laughs> yeah. What is it? T what, in, that, in that experience, what happens is if one person's doing it, it doesn't really impress me. If two, maybe three, maybe four, I want to know what everyone's doing. Are you following me on this? And I would say one of the most important things you could do is give people more social proof. Talk more about how many people are doing it, not how many people cannot afford to do it. So I would encourage you collectively as a company, every time you sell a house, that's a story to be told to everybody. Every time somebody buys a house, start talking about the people who are doing it, not the properties, the people. You know, and I, I can envision that you could have a list of, here are the 
270 people who, who trusted a Tarbell consultant to make their dream come true in the month of August. And you have the pictures of the people and what the people did. It, it's not the house, it's the people. And what people look at are what are other people doing? And that's the most powerful communication you can have is show me other people who are doing what I want to do and it gives me permission to do it. And that's called social proof. How many of you can hear the wisdom in what I just shared with you? I mean, very powerful. And like, so if you produce a newsletter, if you produce communication, stop talking about houses. Stop talking about real estate. And start talking about a young family that lived in an apartment that had a dream of giving a home to their children so they could have a backyard and they could raise their kids in a great school district and, and live the American dream. And finally, for the first time, you know, in five years, with the reduction of home prices, they were able to buy a foreclosure property, and now they've moved in, and although it took them a long period of time, they were willing to do whatever it took to make their dream come true. That's the story that a first-time home buyer looks at and goes, oh yeah, I could do that, versus look at these homes that are in foreclosure. So when you're going out to meet with somebody, keep on giving evidence, proof that other people are doing what you say you could do for them, and that's just a very powerful thing. So what I've done for others. Um, I was listening to Tony today and Tony had a phenomenal suggestion. And, and the suggestion was when you create an offer, write an offer on a property, get a great letter from the buyer. Well, Charlotte Volch up in a Palm Desert came to me and she says, I've got a very difficult situation right now. We can't get the lender to respond. How many of you are having anything like that? And, and I said, well, what's happening is there's no face connected to the transaction. There's no person. It's a file sitting on a table. We got to get some emotion attached to that piece of paper. So when this person who's being paid minimum wage to figure out what to do next, to pass it to the next person, we got to get them emotionally connected to that piece of paper. So I suggested to Charlotte to take her little flip video and sit down with the client and have the client film a video directly to the lender. And we knew the guy, the negotiator at the table. And so here's this woman. She's sitting in a wheelchair. You can actually go on YouTube and just type in Charlotte Volch in the, in the, in the search engine. And you can see the video because we posted it up on YouTube. And so the woman's sitting in a wheelchair and she's saying, Steve, it's me, Mrs. Johnson. My file's been sitting on your desk now for six weeks. I need to tell you what's, what's happening behind the scenes because that's not being handled. My husband, she goes on to tell the story, the real story. And I would say that most people behind the scenes are not connected to the story. Are you following me on this? They're connected to file 707-3089. And, in, and it's your responsibility to put the life in the file. And so we take the video, film it, put it on YouTube. We take the link, we send it to Steve. Within two weeks, it's closed. Because we're talking from one human being to another human being. It's like, how can I get Steve to pay attention to this? And that's called social proof. And so the more social proof you have, the easier it is for people to move in the direction that you want them to be inspired to do. So how many of you can do something new in that direction there? Yeah, good. Now, next part of our letter. So what makes my approach different? That would be the next category. So whenever you're going to send out something in advance, here's the key point to that. Whenever you're sending in advance to somebody, the most powerful thing you can send in advance is not promotion, promotion, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want to say propaganda on the company because you're, you've got beautiful promotional material, but the most important thing inside your promotional material is, is social proof. It's the n pictures and the names of people who are trusting you. Because that's, that's what you look at. If you're looking at doing anything, you look to see who else is doing it. Are they reputable? Do I trust them? Or do they have a good reference? You know, and uh, I, I love that thought. You know, like when you, even when I work with the lenders, when somebody calls up and says, hey, you know, I, I, I'd like to I, you know, find out what your rates are. And I teach the, the lenders to say, well, have you talked to anybody else? And the lender, oh, yeah, yeah, somebody told me I can get this rate. And then I always teach the lenders, say, oh, that's great. If you can get that, excellent. But before you make an agreement with them, ask them if they could give you the list of 10 people with their names and their phone numbers who've gotten that rate the day that they closed. 
in what usually most people can't provide real people who've done what they've said they were going to do. And that's what's missing right now. Make sense, y'all? Okay, good. So uh, what makes my approach different? Uh, I'm continuing on the bottom left. So what's important in today's marketplace is good, honest education about what homes are selling and what homes are just listed. All right, so experience shows that homes that sell have five things in common. Number one, the homeowner is clear about the 30, 60, 90-day time-testing price strategy. After discovering what is really clear Really important to you, your five, six, and seven. I would not put the words five, six, and seven in there, those numbers. I would suggest a 30-day price, a 60-day price, or a 90-day price. It's important to realize that the price of your home determines how fast or how slow it gets sold. Number two, the homeowner is inspired to sell their home. In today's new world, with a 10-month, how big is the inventory right now? How big is the inventory? A 10-month supply, a 9-month supply, an 18-month supply? different cities, so, so you put in your thing of homes for sale, a homeowner can no longer expect to just list their home and have buyers flock to their doorstep like it was in the old world. At our initial consultation, we will explore and discover if this is really the right time to sell and if you have enough motivation to complete, compete with all the other homes that are currently for sale. That's, that's called giving permission to reject. It's a very powerful skill. You become more attractive when you say, we'll find out if you have enough motivation. And you'll watch people go, no, we're motivated. As opposed to you moving towards them, you're actually saying, you know, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to help you. We're going to find out if you have enough motivation. And after discovering you have enough motivation, then we'll decide if we'll put your home on the market. It's taking it away. The, the more that you create that sense of, You'll, I'll see if I can help you based on what you answer, the more people want to answer your questions. Number three, uh, the homeowner is aware of best in class, what I call his BIC strategy. The BIC is the method that we use to get the home in condition that makes it most saleable. The homeowners who focus on getting their home in BIC condi condition sell the quickest and for the Highest current market value. Now, so in today's marketplace, when you're competing with all the short sales and foreclosures, it's pretty easy to get a conventional seller in BIC, best condition in the market, uh, because they can actually do something about it. They have the resources to do it. So you can actually have the best looking property. And it, I would encourage you that, you know, if you're going to take a home in the $220,000 price range and it, you know, just take, put a stick pin in a map and just draw a circle around that area and just say, if somebody's going to buy this home, what other homes are they going to look at? And then you might not know all those homes that they're going to look at if a buyer's going to look at that home and, you know, say that's what I'm competing against. You know, if this is it, how, do our, how does our home look better than all the others? It's best in class, best in that category. And if you have trouble with the seller, a good seller will say, well, let's go look at them. Take, get the seller in the car and go out and look at what the buyers are going to look at. And so they can have that experience of what best in class looks like. And then number four is the homeowner is willing to remove all obstacles to getting the home sold. In this new world, the homeowner will seriously want to sell their home, must be ready at all times to creatively market, show, and negotiate all offers. And then number five is the homeowner is willing to help get the word out. Although I will do 90% of the marketing for you, I will need some help from you. There are a few simple things that can help you spread the news that, uh, that you are selling your house, not listing your house, selling your house. So I wonder, now this is a great question, I wonder how you might be feeling right now knowing the five areas that make a home saleable in this new world. You might want to underline that. And when we get together on Tuesday, we can go into greater detail on how each one of these five things will get your home sold. And I look forward to meeting you on Tuesday. Sincerely, Joe Stop. And then I give P.S. On Tuesday, while you're showing me your home, I'll ask you to describe it to me like you're selling it to me. And the reason I will ask you to do that is, is I want to know what you believe are the best benefits that will help you, uh, that will help you move, uh, that, help, uh, that, that will get when they move into your home, and I want uh, to help you communicate that uh, to as many buyers as possible. So just check in with the person next to you and just see on a scale of one low, 10 high, what's the likelihood you would take this letter or portions of this letter and use it in your pre-appointment communication? Yeah, yeah. Mm.
Okay, good. So with a, with a show of hands, how many of that will improve your level of confidence going in saying that you already have a game plan advance? Can you see that you've already prepared yourself for who you're going to be? When you walk in and say, who I am is a person who helps homeowners sell their property. I'm not a real estate agent who goes out and lists home. And it's a big distinction because some of us go in because we want to get the listing. And you get it, and you go, I've got a listing, but I don't have a seller. And that's how we compete in this new world is we sell homes, don't just list them. And so this matrix will help you operate from there. Now, what I'm going to do for the rest of this class is just kind of show you how to perform all of this. What are the profound, insightful questions? How do you do a 30, 60, 90-day pricing strategy? How do you talk about all these things around staging? How do you get them to engage? What can they do to help you get it sold? But you lay the context out first, and then you invite them in. So I always like to start with the end in mind. So get a clean piece of paper. Start, start with the end in mind. You know, like, so I'm going to ask you to go all the way to the end of the transaction. Imagine it's already sold and closed. What would be the highest vision you would have for the relationship with the client? What would be the, the best thing that could occur for you during the transaction, through the transaction, all the way to the end of the transaction? What would be the very best outcome if you were to give the whole, the big purpose? So real quick, turn to the person next to you and just say, like, what, what do you see as the biggest vision possible, the biggest outcome, the best outcome for you and them? What would it be? Right on. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. What is it? Happy people. Happy people. Okay, happy people. Okay, so watch this. Now, what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give to you is language right now that is... Is um, I'll call them magic words. The, the exact science that I'm going to show for you right now, this exact statement right now, if we could master this, and this is the way we start out all of our consultations, we start with the end in mind. So when you walk in, you'd say to your client, hey, before we even get started, I just want to tell you what my primary purpose in my business is. What my primary purpose is. Let me just start with the end in mind. So this is what I would say it would be. I'm going to take you right away. We'll get to the pre-appointment letter. Here it is. Always start with the end in mind. Mr. and Mrs. Client, my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you would gladly introduce me to at least two people you really care about before I even sell your home or help you buy a home or help you close on your loan. Start with the end in mind. And how many of you believe that when people, you, people being us, whenever we go into an experience, we want to have the ex type of experience that all we want to do is tell other people about the experience. So we speak to that. So imagine you sit down with the client and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, just want to thank you for giving me a chance to get together with you. And uh, I'm delighted to be here representing uh, uh, the Tarbell organization, and I'm uh, passionate about what I do. But before we even get started, I just want to tell you what my purpose is. It's for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you'd gladly introduce me to at least two people that you really care about even before I get your home sold. Now you're speaking through it, not asking to list. You're speaking as if it's already done. And in, in neurolinguistics, it's called speaking through the transaction, all the way through it. Now, whatever response they give, it's agreement they're going ahead with you. How many of you agree that most people want to have that experience? Now, so the key words are this. My purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy. Would you all say the words outrageously happy? Okay, now, now would you look at the person next to you and say it, and as they say it, see if they become happy saying it. Just try it. <laughs> Okay, good. Good. Now, how many of you believe that your words have a frequency to it? There's a vibration that a word has. And the words outrageously happy uh, are words that people are familiar with. People hear the word outrageously, but not in the context of happy. And so it's a pattern interrupt. The mind logs that in as, oh, yeah, that's what I want. I want to be outrageously happy. And if they don't, I don't know if you want to work with them. If they go, oh, I really would like to be miserable with this experience. Now, here's the challenge. For most people who have ever bought or sold a home, they liked the product, but they hated the process. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, it's like going to a restaurant, you have horrible food, but great service. And you walk out and go, that was a lousy experience. Or how many of you ever had great food, but a horrible server? And you go, bad experience. What you're looking for is both the product and the process to be in alignment. 
And so how many of you have ever been on the airline? They got you from where you were to where you wanted to be, but you didn't enjoy the process. <laughs> the product was adequate, but the process stunk. And so when, when people describe the experience, what they're talking about is a combination of the two, two of those things. So these words, Mr. and Mrs. Klein, my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help. Would you all say the word help? Yeah. help. Now, I'm going to ask you to use the word help, not service. Service is a benign word. It's a beautiful word. It's a monastic word. It's the Greek origin. It means a devotion to God. It's a beautiful word, service. However, what you want to do is put people in the role that you are there to help them, not serve them. Help means they're in trouble and they need you. Serve means they have a lot of different places that they can go to get what you're offering them. Uh, oh, who else offers this service versus help? So be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you gladly introduce. Would you all say gladly introduce? Gladly introduce? Now, instead of refer people to me. Refer is our language the way they think is introduce. So from this moment forward, whenever you're about to say the word refer, stop and say introduce. Would you all say introduce? introduce. You turn to the person next to you and say it three times real fast. Yeah, there you go. So the next time you're sitting with a friend, you say, hey, if you have a friend or a family member who could use my help, would you introduce them to me? Sure. Versus, if you know anyone who wants my real estate services, would you refer them to me? Yeah. yeah. One is about you, the other is about them. So this is all about them. It's not my purpose is to be the number one agent in the office. You know, my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you gladly introduce me to at least two people that you really care about even before I get your home sold. So watch what happens. I promise you, you'll get responses like this. Oh yeah, we don't know anyone right now, but if we do, we'll let you know. They've already agreed they're going ahead with you. Well, we don't know anyone. They've already agreed that they're going ahead with you. Well, we'll see what kind of job you do. They've already agreed that they're going ahead with you because you spoke immediately through it, not to it. You'll actually have people say, oh, yeah, we have a couple of friends. And then you'll say, well, we'll see if I'll, let, let's, let's just continue and I'll, uh, we'll get back to that a little later. Take it away from them. Don't go, oh, well, who are they? You know, because <laughs> that's more about you. Remember I said you're going to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you'd gladly introduce me to at least two people that you really care about even before I get your home sold. And you want to be able to roll out of bed and say that. Somebody says, well, what's your purpose? My purpose is that when you buy or sell a home from me that you are so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you introduce me to at least two people that you really care about even before I get your home sold. You want that to be so clear? And wouldn't that be a beautiful thing if every person that you worked with introduced you to two people before the home was even sold? Say yes. Yeah, and the likelihood of them doing it is at an all-time high during the process. From the moment you meet the client to the time the transaction is over, they will see the most people who are going to be interested in your services. They'll see the most people who will need your guidance, your advice, your help. They're going to talk to you more frequently than ever before. The average transaction has hundreds of phone calls, so you're talking to them all the time. And then how many of you ever noticed that when it's important to you, you start seeing other people just like you? So... Uh, if you're looking for a new car, all of a sudden you start seeing the car everywhere that you're looking for. Yes or no? You believe this to be true that when somebody puts their home up for sale, they start seeing for sale signs everywhere. When they're not selling their home, they hardly even notice it. And so right now in the during process, the likelihood of them introducing someone to you is at an all-time high. I'm suggesting that you plant a very good seed right at the beginning with this statement. So let's just do a little practice with it because when you say it, when you hear it the first time, it, the brain says, oh, that's, that's, that sounds good, a little more accidental. When you hear it the second time, the brain goes, oh, that's coincidental. I just said that before. And when you say it the third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, what happens is it starts to cut a pattern. And you want to get to a place where you're not even thinking. How many of you have realized that thinking is what gets you in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody recognize that your, your, your mind has a contract on your butt? <laughs> you, you almost want to just find the very best thoughts and install them and then isn't it beautiful when you say the right thing at the right time and everyone is happy and you go ah oh. and so you turn out and say hey Mr. and Mrs. Klein I'm so grateful to be here today and to talk about something I'm really passionate about which is getting your home sold in today's uh, new world and even before we get started I just want to tell you my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you would gladly introduce me to at least two people that you really care about even before I get your home sold what else can they say they can't say no don't want that and so what we're doing is we're starting at a very high frequency with a big purpose, which is them to have an experience 
that they want to tell other people about, which is the highest experience that people could have. So why don't you try this? Would you turn to the person next to you and just say that three times? The person with the shortest hair goes first. Say it three times. <laughs> go ahead. Three times. Go. Good. Okay, come on back. Good. Excellent. Now, now, with a show of hands, how many of you think you're going to have to practice that a little bit? Okay. So what are the key words? What are the key words there? And? So if you just walk in and you go, they're going to be outrageously happy and gladly introduce me. So you're anchored to that. Outrageously happy, gladly introduce. Everybody say it. And that's it. So if we can just remember, I'm walking in. Okay, these folks are going to be so outrageously happy that they're going to gladly introduce. Ding dong. Hi, you're outrageously happy and you're gladly going to introduce. You know? <laughs> and that's who you're being. If you had to be a person that they would be outrageously happy so they gladly introduce, you'll do something different. Be, do, have. Re generating referrals is not something you do. It's somebody you be. And you speak to it immediately. You talk about it. it. Like, this is what I do. I eat, I sleep, and I get referrals. That's my life. It's in that order. Eat, sleep, referrals, introductions. So, all in favor of moving forward on that concept, say aye. Okay, give the person next to you a high five. Say motion carried. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. okay. Now, with that in mind... With that in mind, remember what's really important to you. In the letter it says the biggest chunk of our time is discovering what's really important to you about selling your home. I will ask you some thought-provoking questions. Now some of you are saying, what are those questions? You know, how many of you have ever been asked a thought-provoking question? Yeah, yeah. And what does it do when you're asked a thought-provoking question? Yeah. yeah. I just got done reading a book, and I, I would recommend that you guys throw this in your library, and, or if you like to listen to books on audio, you can get it on audio. It's, just, it's only 104 pages, but it's one of those life changers. It's called You, Yes, You Can Change the World. It's one of those books. It would be a book that Don would write. It's, just, it's, a, it's a phenomenal book. It's a short parable. It just came out. It's written by a man named Aman, A-M-A-N, Maktawan. Ma Aman Maktawan. You can go over to Amazon. It's one of the top selling books right now. It came out about two or three weeks ago. It's really brilliantly written. It'd be a great gift to give to at a closing, to give to your clients, to give to people who, are, who like to read. And the story is this. This, gen this young man shows up at his father's funeral, and there's a thousand people there. And he has not t spoken to his dad in 10 years. And he's wondering, how did a 1,000 people show up at my dad's funeral when I don't have any relationship with him? So he goes from person to person to person and starts to talk to him about his father. And he hears over and over again the same thing people are saying about his father. And it's what his father left these 1,000 people. And his father had a huge impact on these 1,000 people. It was really magnificent. And what he got out of this, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story because I want you to read the book, but what he got out of it was, what do I want people to say at my funeral? And I thought about that. What do you want people to say at your funeral? I mean, I, wouldn't it be cool if somebody says, you know what, every time I was around him, I was so outrageously happy, all I wanted to do was tell other people about him. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you would love to have that? <laughs> that every time he showed up, I, I got happy. And I got so happy that all I wanted to do was tell all my friends about it. What a wonderful way to live into a higher purpose. Now, I don't know if that would be yours, but if you gave that some thought, because it's a provoking question, you know, what are people going to say at your funeral? And if you read the book, it talks all about what his father had done with these thousand people, and then he realized that his father had done it for him exactly what he did for the thousand people. Now, he was leading this big, giant organization, and he was doing for the people what his father did for him. And it wasn't that his father was estranged from him. His father just let him go and do his work. And sometimes that's what we have to do, is we have to do our work and let it go. And so I really encourage you that when you're going to sit down with your client, the, most, the biggest gift you can give them is insight. Give them an awareness they didn't have before they met with you. Not data, 
Not information, but insight, awareness. And insight only comes when you ask really great questions that cause people to go inside and go, wow, that's a good question. Oh, wow, you know what, I like, that's, let, me, let me consider that. And as soon as they come up with the answer, it alters their consciousness. How many have ever had an insight, and then as soon as you saw it, you could not pretend you didn't see it? Yeah, remember an insight that you had. Uh, I was in Seaside Market one day, and I'm walking through the aisles, and there's this woman that has this child who's just way out of line. This baby's screaming, and it's just carrying on. And I'm watching this woman walk up, and she goes, come on, honey, slow, you know, like, oh, come on, Johnny, Johnny. You know, and she put him back in the stroller, and, yeah! And I was thinking to myself, this parent needs some manual, something <laughs> to to calm this child down. It's completely inappropriate. And I started building this case in my mind about her inability to raise a child, her unwillingness to really be, how many of you have ever had a judgment? <laughs> you know, and so I get up to the cash register and she happens to come right up in front of me, right, right next to me, and the kid, ah, just carrying on. And I, and I looked and I said, gee, mom, you really got your hands full. And she goes, oh no, I'm not her mother. Uh, I'm the mother's sister. The mother's in the hospital. The baby hasn't seen his mother in a couple of weeks. And I went, oh. <laughs> you know, and it was like in that moment, my whole perception changed. How many of you ever had one of those moments? And you go, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? You know, like, I, what, where was I at? And that, that's what you're looking for, are those moments in life where that alters you. Now I go into the seaside market. There's a baby crying. I look out and I go, oh, I wonder what I could do to help. You know, it changes everything when you have that insight. That's your responsibility when you walk into a homeowner's house is just help them have that kind of quality insight because they're seeing you as a salesperson. You all, you all clear on that? They're, you walk in, they already have you as a salesperson. You walk in and all you're doing is proving you're a salesperson until you shift it and they see you as an advisor. And that's only going to happen not by what you say, but by what you ask. Ask profound questions, you get profound answers. Ask shallow questions, you get shallow answers. And your responsibility is ask thought-provoking questions. Questions that the typical salesperson would never take the risk in asking. And so let me share with you what that would look like. And I would say this might be the single most important question you'll ever learn to ask because it is thought-provoking, and it takes people very deep into the unconscious part of the mind when you ask, what's important about selling your home to you? What's important about selling your home to you? And the secret to this question is to ask it seven times. And what happens every time you ask it, you go deeper and deeper into the truth. And so we use a technique called the five, the six, and the seven. So when you're with a client, do I have a workbook, a main event workbook? I could show them that workbook. Uh, what we ask you to do is, is that when you're with a client, is actually have a piece of paper that looks like this. Have a form. This is from our, our main event workbook. I, I, I have a form that looks like this. It's very similar to what's up on the screen right there. And when you sit down with a client and say, my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you'd gladly introduce me to at least two people that you really care about even before I can help you. Now, I don't know if I can help you, but I am going to ask you a few thought-provoking questions as I listen to your answers. If I don't think I'm the right consultant to help you, I'll let you know right away. And if I think I can help you, I'll let you know right away. See, that's the key is immediately let people know, I'll let you know if I can help you after I ask you questions. The typical salesperson comes in, oh, nice house, I can sell this. And then what that does is to the quality homeowner, they go, well, we're just interviewing that. You know, you, you, I feel like I'm being sold. Are you tracking with me on this? So it's called permission to reject. When you say to a person, I'm going to ask you a few thought-provoking questions, I'm going to listen to your answers, and as I listen to your answers, if I don't think that I can help you, I'll let you know right away. Then I'll tell you how I work, and as you listen, if you don't think you're the right client for me, would you let me know? Boy, that puts you in a very powerful place. It, it, it creates a place that you come from that you're respected. You're honored. It's like you really believe who you are, and I don't know if this is the right fit. We'll find out. So again, I'll just say those words again. I'm going to ask you a few thought-provoking questions. Would you all say that? I'm going to listen to your answers. And if I don't think I'm the right consultant for you, I'll let you know. Then I'll tell you how I work. 
And as you listen, if you don't think I am the right consultant for you, would you let me know? And it's called permission to reject. And what happens instantly, there's a level playing field. It's no longer you're groveling for the business. You know that, it's called Stuart Wilde in his little book, his beautiful little book that I brought here with me this morning, is called Silent Power. I think, I think Stuart Wilde is a wild, crazy author, but he wrote this great little book called Silent Power. Power comes from standing straight up. Where you lose your power is when you start to lean in. Now, I'll tell you anything you need to hear in order to list the property with me tonight. <laughs> and you lose your power. They get control. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And when you stand straight up, you're really clear that I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to listen to your answers. And if I'm not the right person to help you, I'm going to let you know. Now, there's some embedded commands in there. I'll, here's a little more advanced neurolinguistics. Watch this. I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to listen to your answers. And if I don't think I am the right consultant for you, I'll let you know immediately. Did you hear that? Where, where did my hand go? Now, this is a little more advanced. Now, I, I'm a, I have a master's practitioner in neurolinguistics, so I know that when I say, I'm going to ask you a few really thought-provoking questions, I'm going to listen vigilantly to your answers, and if I don't think I am the right consultant for you, hear my tone of voice go up? I'll let you know immediately. So I'm doing what? I'm self-appointing. And it's called a negation. I put a negative in front of the positive. If I don't think... What I'm saying to them is, don't think I'm the right consultant for you. That's like saying, don't think of a yellow Volkswagen. Your mind can't do that. Are you tracking with me on this? Okay, now I'm giving you something a little, can, how many of you can handle this? This is a little more advanced. So just take your right hand, put it on your heart and say, I am the right consultant for you. Okay, so you say, you know, I'm going to ask you a few thought-provoking questions. I'm going to listen to your answers. And if I don't think, pause, raise your voice, I am the right consultant for you. And just, you give agreement to it. I am the right consultant for you. I'll let you know immediately. And then I'm going to share with you how I work. And as you listen, if you don't think I am the right consultant for you, would you let me know immediately? And you've embedded it twice. Okay, how many of you think this is almost unfair? <laughs> See, there's so many things you don't even know that you don't even know. How many of you ever walk up in the morning and says, I think there's more that I don't know that I do know? How many of you ever met a know-it-all? <laughs> Anyone married to? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Over here, he knows it all. <laughs> and sometimes they do. You know? <laughs> so w as we go through this process, as we go through this process of helping a person have an insight, what you want to do is just create a space where they feel real safe, like you're not trying to sell them. So if you're saying to somebody, hey, Dottie, um, my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you gladly introduce me to at least two people that you really care about even before I get your home sold. And I don't even know if I'm going to be the right consultant for you. I'm going to ask you a few thought-provoking questions. I'll listen. And if I don't think I am the right consultant for you, I'm going to let you know immediately. Fair enough? Okay, then I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I work. And as you listen, if you don't think you're the right consult, if, if you don't think that I am the right consultant for you, would you let me know? Okay, so what I've learned is, is that your decisions are easy when your values are clear. And in order for me to best advise you, I really need to find out what's important about selling your home to you. And so what I've done is I've created this tool, this method to help us kind of structure our conversation so I can really focus on what's important to you. Now, I promise you right now, they're really interested because it's not about you. What's the, what's the most powerful word in the English language? You. Well, even before that, it's your name. What's the number one word typed into Google? A name. The second most powerful word is you. And so as soon as you start to pull out and start to talk about you, you lose them, even at the unconscious level. So when you have to focus on them, then they have to find insight. So you can take out this form. So what you are going to do is, is we're going to find out what's important to you. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to write down your answer in this spot. And I'm going to ask you another question. I'm going to ask it right down here. And it might feel redundant, might feel a little bit repetitive, but what we'll do is by the time we're done, we'll have all these filled in, what we'll know is what's really important about selling your home to you. Now, the unconscious mind wants to fill in the boxes. It's very difficult for it to leave them incomplete. Are you tracking with me on this? It's, it's like a painting. You ever walk into a room and the painting is slightly crooked and there's a part of you that says, can I, let me hang on one minute. And you walk over and you straighten out a little bit and you go, okay, everything's back to normal. <laughs>
Yeah. And that's how the mind works. The mind does not want to have incompletion in front of it. So when you put it down there and you ask them the question, what's important about selling your home to you? And they say, well, we want to net $60,000. You take the form and you put in there net $60,000. You write their exact words inside the box. Not your interpretation of the words, but their exact words. Because what they're giving you in NLP is called hot words. They'll give you the language that you're going to use for the rest of your consultation in these seven words. This is their language. And what you don't know is what language they speak. See, you want to speak your language when they can only hear their language. And when they fill all this in, that's all the language you're going to use to influence them, to help them choose you as their consultant if you want to work with them. Are you tracking with me so far? Yeah, so this is, I'm getting into some pretty advanced training, but how many of you can see the benefit of taking your skill level up another notch here? Yeah, because in this new economy right now, what determines your success or failure is your capacity to inspire people to take action. And that all comes from your language. We speak into existence our future. We put it inside our language. So let me take you through a, a, a step here. And I, I think the best way for me to do this is just to kind of demonstrate this and uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate it with somebody with us in the group here today, and I'd like to work with somebody who this is the first time you're seeing me do this. This is your first experience, and uh, you want to role play with me now. So how many of you, who wants to do that with me now? Okay, got one. Okay, now I want you to know two. Okay, good. Now notice what happened. Three. Three hands just went up. What happened when I just asked you to, to role play with me? What happened to most of you? What happened? For something happened. You no, only three people. Nobody went, over here! Something happened. And all I did was gave words. I said, who would like to stand up and role play with me? It's only stand up and role play with me. Seven words. Okay, I got you. Okay, good, good. I got you. Okay, I'll get to you in a minute, but let me just make this point. I'll work with you, okay? All right. <laughs> but what happened? See, he was even provoked. I could hear, stand up, you, stand up over there. <laughs> He's doing it out of fear still. <laughs> I got you, okay. But what happened to the rest of you? How come the rest of you didn't stand up? Something happened. You, <laughs> okay, some of you see seen me do it before, <clears throat> but something happened, and it's probably based in what? Fear. How many of you believe your clients are the same way? When they're asked to do something, they sit on their hands. So watch. As soon as you give somebody a thought, words, it turns into a feeling, which produces an immediate behavior. Nothing. You say something, they feel it, they act. You can see what your language is doing by how people are behaving. Are you tracking with me on this? Yeah. So the beautiful part about standing up in a, in a beautiful environment like this, because this is about as safe as it gets. This is the most loving, supportive group of people you're going to be around today. Because once you get in the car and you go over to McDonald's, you go to Starbucks, you get in the outside in the world, there's not a like-minded mindset. Would you agree with that? This is a safe place. This is where you grow. And also there's something beautiful about when you stand up and you role play, everybody who watches learns. So you're not doing it for you, you're doing it for everybody. As a matter of fact, the person who stands up and participates is really saying, I care more about you growing than the fear that I'm experiencing. I'm not here to impress. I'm here to express that I love each one of you so much that I'm willing to stand up and step out of my comfort zone. The person who stands up is probably the person who understands that everything good in life happens when you get out of your comfort zone. Nothing really improves in your life until you get out of your comfort zone. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And so when you stand up and role play with me, you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for everyone. And also, you're modeling a behavior that represents the highest version of yourself. And some of you right now, when you don't participate, what happens is you're modeling a behavior that you don't really want to represent in, in life. You know, there's, for some of you, you've never participated before for some reason, and now here's an opportunity where you can break through that, break through that, <laughs> that discomfort right now. And I know that some of you are ready to participate. All you need is permission to participate, you know, and to raise your hand and stand up. So who would like to do this with me? Let's just see. How, it just, I won't call on anyone, but who would like to do it? Just <laughs> raise your hands real high. Raise your hands, everyone. Raise your hands right now. There you go. Good. Okay, give the person next to you a high five and say, I, I didn't get called on, but I'm glad I raised my hand. <laughs> okay, young man, this young man right over here, would you stand up for a second with, my pur with the purple shirt on, that nice spiritual purple? Would you give him a nice round of applause? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to just take you through this exercise. Now, what I want, I want you to pay cl close attention to are the questions that I ask. And notice how I ask them and how I take... Uh, what's your first name? Uh, Carlos Orozco. Carlos? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'll, 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 I'll put your name right up here. Carlos? Now, Carlos, uh, can, can everyone see this or can we bring it onto the camera and so the camera will represent that? Okay. Oh, so you got four. Oh, you got eight of them up there. Oh, I like that. Okay, good. So watch what happens. Are you ready? Carlos, first of all, your willingness just to stand up and contribute to the rest of the group, not knowing even what you're getting yourself into, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, a it's a courageous act. Thank you. I really, I'm grateful for your contribution to the group here. Thank you. So uh, the question I'm going to ask you is, is, what's important about success to you? Is success important to you? Yes. Okay, yes, so, it is. so we'll turn that mic up a little bit. So what's important about success to you? Uh, give, me, give me a word or two. Imagine I just have to fill the word into one of these blanks here. So what word would you pick? What comes to mind first? Uh, confidence. Okay, confidence. So I'm going to put down here, I'm going to put down right on, on our board here, I'm going to put confidence. Good. Now, confidence, Carlos, means different things to different people. So if I interviewed everyone here and said, what does confidence mean to you? We'd probably all come up with our own interpretation of that. So when you say confidence, what's important about confidence to you? Uh, having the knowledge. Good, I love that. Let me get that up here. Okay. Having the knowledge. You're doing great, Carlos. Isn't he doing great? Yes. Yeah, he's doing great. Okay, so here's what I know about success to you. So I'll put the word success up here. To Carlos, success means right now is confidence, which gives him this knowing, this knowing, this like having the knowledge. So what's important about having the knowledge to you? The experience in my business. Experience. Experience. All right, good. So I love where you're going with this. So what I've heard you say so far is success means confidence, having the knowledge, and experience. Do I have it right so far? That's correct, yeah. Okay, good. So let's take it up another notch here. What's important about experience to you? That I can be able to help all my clients. Yeah, I love that. Help all my clients. I love where you're going with this. And so here's what I hear you saying so far is what success means to you is there's a level of confidence that you have the knowledge, you have the experience so you can help all your clients. That's correct. How are we doing so far? I think we're doing good. Okay, we're, do we're doing good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Carlos, the fifth question is this. What's important about helping all my clients, helping all your clients to you? That means uh, uh, I'm 100% that I can get more referrals for my business. Okay, so helping all of your clients means that you can get more referrals. That's correct. Okay, okay so I'll put in here more referrals. Very good. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. Is success means confidence, having the knowledge, which gives you a sense of greater experience, allows you to help all of your clients, which in turn produces more referrals for you. And then what's important about more referrals to you? Just, to, don't, just don't listen to them, just to you. <laughs> okay, don't rescue him. Some of you want to throw a life jacket. Help him, help him. No, my personal <laughs> Let success. him struggle. <laughs> Look for your own insight. Like really go inside right now. Move out of your head. Move down here for a minute. Go down in your heart. Just kind of look inside and say, like, okay, I really want to help all my clients. I really want that. I, that's something that's really important to me. And the outcome is going to be is they're going to want to gladly introduce me to the people that they care about, really refer people to me. Mm -hmm. So what's important deep in your heart about more referrals to you? Success, personal success. Okay, but uh, we got that, that's what our mm -hmm. definition is. Yeah. But what's it really important about more referrals to you? When you really look inside, what's important to you about to that? To taking care of my family. There you go, he just said it, did you hear it? Yeah. He just said it, now we're starting to get into some truth now. <laughs> Take care of my family. What's really important about success to Carlos is a level of confidence, have knowledge, a deeper level of experience so he can take care of all of his clients so they can refer, and the outcome is, is that he can take care of his family. Now, Carlos, what's important about taking care of your family to you? Uh, to make sure that you know, my family is going to be okay. 
uh, you know, especially in this uh, top market, you know, that we're in this new world. Yeah, in this new, new world. world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's say it again. What's important about taking care of my family to you? Look in your heart. What's the answer? Now notice that the longer a person looks, the more they're sorting for insight. What's really true? And sometimes you're asking a client this question and you're uncomfortable with the silence when in fact they're just looking for truth. It's a profound question that doesn't have a quick answer. You have to look inside and you have to go, wow, what is important about taking care of my family to me? Now in a room like this, you know, he's kind of doing two things he's performing and he's co you know he's got got other things going on right now but he's also doing a great job would you agree with that yes. yeah this is this is tough stuff yeah thank you so so what's important about taking care of your family to you what comes to what comes to heart first just to prove myself that I'm doing that I love my business I love I, I love my business, and I'm doing my best. What'd you say? Because that's what I love to do. I love to do. That's what I love to do. You know what Carlos is saying is, that's my purpose. It's my purpose. As superior man, you are. You are a superior man. You know what a superior man does? It's so clear about his purpose that it allows him to take care of his family, take care of his clients, get all the knowledge, get all the experience. So he can have the level of confidence that he wants. That's what a superior man does. You are a superior man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an ext extraordinary experience to have, Carlos. I did not know that. When I walked in the room, I saw Carlos. Oh, nice, I like the color shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks like a nice guy, but I had no idea that what was inside him was a deep commitment to having confidence, knowledge, experience, so he could help his clients. So he could generate more referrals, so he could take care of his family, so he could be on purpose. Now, that's his language. Did you see him light up when we used his words? Yes or no? Yes. Now, every time I'm going to give him advice, I'm going to put it inside here. So I say, Carlos... For you to really be the type of person who takes care of their family so you can be on purpose, here's what I would suggest that you do. Whenever I'm going to give him a suggestion, I'm going to wrap it inside his 5, 6, and 7. I would never ask you to do anything unless I put it inside your 5, 6, and 7. Carlos, I, I would love to coach you. I coach, there's about 80 people inside your company that we coach right now. Um, and I, I would love you to be part of that group. I would love to. Yeah. And when you do, what will happen is, is you'll get more referrals. You'll be able to take care of your family and really love your business more, which will give you confidence, which will give you the knowledge, get, help you get greater experience, and help more of your, your clients. That's what our coaching will do for you. Thank you. Now, our coaching will do for you? Well, you have to tell me what your five, six, and seven is. Whatever is important to you is what I do for you. Are you following me on this? And so when you're sitting with a client, you're asking the same question. So, Carlos, thank you so much for participating with us. Uh, I'm just you. so proud of you. Yeah, good work. Good work. So, so he here's what I'd like you to just put in your, your imagination right now, sitting with a client saying, so what's important about selling your house to you? And they go, well, we'd like to net $60,000. Now, what, what the typical salesperson does is now starts to maneuver to try to get approval around the 60000 But that's not even the issue. But that's where everyone starts, is around money. Are you following me on this? Because there's nowhere else to start. That's, that's the starting point. But the next question is, is what's important about netting $60,000 to you? And they go, well, that will give us enough money to make the move. That's a pretty typical answer. So you say, make enough money to make the move. And you say it charge neutral, but it's, you're just trying to get into relationship with somebody. You're trying to get into the red because you're, if you're in the blue, you're still a real estate agent. As soon as you move into the red, you're now their friend, their consultant, their advisor. You know the truth. How many have ever been on a consultation where all of a sudden they said, okay, here's what's really going on. <laughs> and then all of a sudden everything changed because they told you the what? It's the truth. 
this process just gets to the truth a lot faster <laughs> in a structured way. And then they say, well, we, so we can move out. So what's important about moving on to you? Oh, we just need a bigger house. Oh, it's a bigger house. So what's important about a bigger house to you? Oh, our son Johnny, he's going to college and he's sharing a brother bedroom with his two brothers and he needs his own room so he can you know, study not being distracted. Oh, so Johnny needs his own room so he can study in a non-distracted way so he can get to college. So what's important about Johnny getting to college to you? Oh, he's going to be the only kid in the family that's going to get a college education. Oh, only kid in the co- family get a college education. What's important about making sure he's the only kid that gets college education? Are you following me on this? Now you're not out to sell their house. You're out to get Johnny an education. <laughs> it's a bigger purpose. <laughs> Say yes. Yeah. Now, this is the conversation they're having behind your back. Oh, I hope Johnny gets the college education that he really wants because, boy, this agent, I hope we got the right agent because if they don't sell his house, Johnny's going to get bad grades. That's the conversation. Then they come out here and say, are we going to net 60000 <laughs> But they don't know any, they don't see you as on their team, the 5, 6, and 7 team. And so here's m- my question to you is look at all the homes and in inventory that you're currently servicing right now, that you're currently responsible for and ask yourself, do you know what their five, six, and seven is? And I would suggest to you, if you don't know what their five, six, and seven is, how could you advise them? How can you tell them what to price it at? Because the price is a function of their five, six, and seven. Well, what, what's my price? Well, it depends on how much time you have to sell it. And I don't know how much time you have until I ask you a few thought-provoking questions. Listen to your answers to find out if I'm the right person to help you. And I could ask you seven questions. At the end of the seven questions, I can tell you if I can help you and what your price is, that will help you get your five, six, and seven. So I could get to a point where I say, now, you told me that you wanted Johnny in a school by September 15th so he could get the education that you wanted so he can be the first kid in the family to get into college so he can have the degree that you never got, that your parents, you promised your parents you'd get him. Here's what I would suggest that we price the property at in order to make that come true. Are you following me on this? Not sell the home, but make that come true. Because that's why they're selling the home. And I would suggest that most of you don't even know what that is. And so what you get is, what are the comps? You go into a logical conversation. It's like Steve at the bank. He doesn't, it's a file number. He doesn't know the story behind it. There's a wonderful saying. It says, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you know about me. If you don't know about me, how could you care? You cannot fake playing the violin. (laughs) You can't fake your initial consultation. You can't fake relationship. It's either you're engaged in their dream or you don't even know what it is. And you want to watch your relationships transform? Jesse Ibanez, young agent down in uh, El Cajon. I don't know if you guys got offices down there in that area. If not, we would open one up and get him in there. He's, he's your type of guy. You know, Jesse, he finds out what everyone's five, six, and seven is. He makes his most important thing. And then he goes online, and there's a company that sells these little bands. Maybe you've seen them. They're like uh, what Lance Armstrong wears, the live good, you know, and live strong, live strong. So what he does is he has them made up with the person's five, six, and seven on it. And you know, if he was here today, he would have about eight or nine of them on his wrist right now. And he goes on a consultation, and people say, what is that? And he goes, oh, these are my clients' dreams and aspirations and hopes, and I carry them with me everywhere I go. (laughs) That's the business you're in. The business you're in is not selling homes. It's making that come true for people. Say yes? yes? Well, you want to watch your business explode. Be about them, not about you. And I'll tell you, it's going to be a lot easier to price the property when you're talking to them about their five, six, and seven. When you make a suggestion around pricing, say, well, based on what's important to you, here's what I recommend we put the home on the market for. Now, if we choose to do that, we can get your five, six, and seven in the next 30 days. Now, if you want to wait longer, we'll put it at this price. We want to work even longer, we want to put it at this price. But you need to know is, is the higher the price, the less likely we are not to sell it, but to get what? Five, six, and seven. Keep, to keep, your behavior is holding you back from the outcome that you want. And then you have to make a decision. Well, based on what you told me and based on what's your price, I don't think I'm going to be the right consultant for you. Because my job is not to list your home. My job is to make your five, six, and seven come true, which means sells your home. 
And then you just become more attractive because what you are is about them. And that's exciting. That's what your company is about. Watch people refer you like crazy. You'll have people saying, oh, you got to talk to my sister. She should have talked to you before she listed. Here, her listing is up next week. You should call her. That's the kind of stuff that happens when you have a profound conversation with somebody. Now, how many think this is going to take some practice? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, uh, you know I've, got, I've got some wonderful tools. I've got an extraordinary uh, set of tapes. I've got 17 hours of training, about four and a half hours of training just on this listing consultation. I've got it all scripted out for you. I, I'm, he, I'm, I'm coaching uh, many people in your company right now. We have a coaching program that's $99 a month. How many are, are, are you part of that program with me right now? So thank you for being with me. So we, 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 I'd love to work with more of you. That's why... Um, your company has invited me to come in to show you some of the things that I can help you out with. So I, my encouragement is just to ch keep checking us out. Ask your manager about us. Ch keep checking us out. We've got a, a great set of uh, audio and video tapes for $199. Is that right? $199. I, I give you a whole, I, I got everything I put into a big box here for you for $199. That will introduce you to our concept and I brought some of them with us today. So I'd encourage if you want to take this another step because it does take practice. It does take learning. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll do the best I can in the time that we have today, but what I really would love to do is meet you every morning at 5 o'clock at the gym. <laughs> you know, and, and I want you to pay in advance. <laughs> and then I want to tell you what the outcome's going to be when you master that is it's a sense of it doesn't matter what happens in the old world. Your techniques are, your skills are preparing you for the whole new world. And so I really encourage you to take a look at that. So um, how are we doing on time right now? We have until 12.30, so let's go right through, okay? So let me just get, give you this, uh, this thought here. Look at this. Uh, this is, a, when you say to a person, I, although I have a strong opinion of what's best for my clients, I always first share with you what I believe are your best options. And most of the time, we can narrow it down to four options, four different directions that you can take. And we're, we'll explore all four of them when we meet. That's what we say in the letter. Now, let me show you what those options are. Number one, you know, I'd love you to write this down because this is very powerful, extremely influential language. Now, how many of you would like to have the type of influence that you make enough money that you never have to tell your family they can't have what they want? This is the type of skills that will help you do that. So number one, you'd say to a client, so when we're all done, you'll really have four options. Option number one is you decide to do nothing at all. Now underline the word decide. Would you all say decide? decide. Now, that's a very powerful linguistic word, decide. Actually, if you look up its origin, decide. Well, what other words do you know that end in C-I-D-E? <laughs> There's others than that. There's different ones. You know, what other ones you come up with? What do they all mean? They all mean over, done, complete, pesticide, genocide, all the side words. They're all done. So when you say, if, you take, if you're looking at me right now, okay, we're, when you write your name, which direction is your name moving? Would you point in the direction? Would you, everyone point your finger in the direction that your, your words are moving. Okay, so this direction? Okay, everyone point in that direction. Okay, that's your future. That's your future. So I'm looking at you right now, and I want to anchor for you your future. So what I would do is everything that I want you to avoid, I'm going to anchor over here. So I'd say, I'd say, Brent, when we're all done with the consultation, you really have four different options. Option number one is you decide to do nothing. And I, I actually physically put my hands over here and I anchor it over here. Option number two is you decide to do it all on your own. Option number three is you decide to work with a more traditional agent. And then option number four is you choose to work with me. Are you following me on this? Now, everything that you want them to avoid, you put over here. And everything you want them to do, you put over here. And that's called spatial indexing. A little more advanced technique. So when you're and somebody says, well, we'd like to put the home on the market for 225 You go, well, if we put the home on the market for 225 and you anchor it in an area that does not feel good, you'll watch people have a, a reaction to it. You'll, you'll watch what happens. 
Now, this is a little more advanced. I'm kind of sneaking this in on you, but what I'd love you to do is just get this down. They have four options. What are they? Number one, do nothing. Number two, number three, and number four. Okay, so number one is two, three. Okay, now let me see both your hands. Okay, so what's number one? Do nothing. Number two, your own. Three. So it's decide, 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 choose. Okay, so I'm looking at you. My future is there. So where is option one? Option two. Option three. Option four. Okay. Oh, so, so what's number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Okay, so somebody says, so if we get together, what are we going to do? Well, I'm sure with what your options are. And when we're all done, um, you don't have to do anything. You could do it all on your own. You could work with someone else, or you choose to work with me. <laughs> choose to work with me. Say that. Choose it's an embedded command. You're telling them, choose to work with me. Choose to work with me. It's almost unfair when you have language skills. <laughs> Now, you've got you to you gotta know that there's a responsibility here because you can manipulate with this also. But manipulate, if you look up the word manipulate, it means to move with intention. And you can, I can manipulate this by throwing at you. That would hurt. Or I can manipulate it by changing the slides, which benefits you. So m when I give you skills like this, you have to use them responsibly. Now, how many of you have a few kids that you'd like to use them irresponsibly on? <laughs> <laughs> I could teach you some cool things there. <laughs> but, I, but if we could just get to the point where we say at the beginning of the consultation, my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you gladly introduce me to at least two people you really care about even before I get your home sold. And I don't even know if I'm going to help you. I'm going to ask you a few thought-provoking questions. I'm going to listen to your answers. If I don't think I am the right consultant to help you, I'll let you know immediately. But first I'll tell you how I work. And as you listen, if you don't think you are the right client for me, I'll let you know immediately. So before we even get started, I just want to find out what's important about selling your home, what's important about, what's important, what's important, what's important about. Okay, now that I know you're five, six, and seven, you know, you're, we're going to be done in about 40 minutes, 35 minutes. You'd say to the client, we'll be done in about an hour. And when we're all done, you'll really have four options. Number one is you don't have to do anything. Number two is you can do it all on your own. Number three is you work with a more traditional agent, or you choose to work with me. So when I'm all done, what I'm going to say to you is one, two, three, or me. Would you all say it? Okay, with your hands. One, two, three, four, eight. Okay, now that's called an automatic tumbler. If you can get that in, it's like almost a, uh, an automatic tumbler. It gets into the brain. Winston tastes good like a. Isn't that amazing? Campbell's soup is. Mm, they got it in. Bye, bye, Miss American. It's in the it's in the mind right now, and you want to you want to be able to say with joy. You go say you know. So when we're all done, I'm going to say, what's it going to be? One, two, three. Pause or me. <laughs> and that's called putting the close at the beginning. Tell people what's going to happen at the end, at the beginning. So there's a natural conclusion. So, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, we're complete right now. I'm wondering, what's it going to be? One, two, three, or me. And what you do the entire consultation, everything that is in their favor is over here. And everything you want them to avoid is over here. And o over the course of a conversation, if you keep on anchoring, this is what you do not want to do. Oh, that's an old world idea. Somebody says, well, we'd like to put our home on the market for 480000 Oh, in the old world, we could have done that. We, could, we certainly could have done that. In the old world, we put it on the market and it would sell immediately. And let me just, just share with you what's going on in the new world. Let me just show you the names of some of the people that have entered in the new world, some of the neighbors of yours that have, and, every, and some of the, here are some of the homes that are still on the market. They've been just listed. Are you following me on this? And you keep, and what you're responsible for, and it's your skill, you're responsible to influence people in the direction that makes their dream come true. Or you're winging it, hoping that they'll figure it out on their own. And what are you really paid to do? Is influence people in the direction of their highest version of themselves. So first you have to find it, and then you have to help them move in that direction. So how many of you have a few things to think about right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you can see this is worth studying? Yeah. R right now... Whether you do this or not, in the next three to five years, what's going to determine whether you're going to make in this business or not are your skills. And the skill that will make the difference is what happens when you open up your mouth. 
you are paid to talk. How many of you have met people you thought, you know, you were doing great until you started talking? (laughs) (laughs) Yes or no? Yeah. How many of you have ever been involved with another agent and said, you'd be best just shutting up? (laughs) Yeah. Let me take it from here. Just zip it. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Robert Greenleaf, one of my favorite authors, says, only speak when what you're about to say will improve upon the silence. Yeah, language, language. So let me share with you a few things that I've been working on over the last 20 years or so. It's language. And I'm, my mother was a school teacher. My father was an entrepreneur. My dad owned a drapery store, and he made drapes for Sears on the south side of Chicago. And I'd go in and work with him you know, during the uh, holidays and after school, and I would cut material. And, uh, and then they would fold it, and then they would sew it, and they'd make drapes. And so I, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I knew what that was like for what you had to do to make money paid on results, not on your time. So you guys aren't paid for your time, you're paid for your results. It's a totally different economy than the entitlement economy. How many of you know what I mean by the entitlement economy? You know, right now we're at a pr- really critical time in our country that we're either going to go in the entitlement direction or we're going to go in the results direction. And you guys are paid for results. How many of you, how many of you understand that clearly? That's, you have chosen to be paid for results. That's, that's all there is. And so my father was always impressing upon me, be paid for results. Be paid for your results. My mother was a school teacher. And she worked for the Chicago Board of Education for 31 years. And she got a paycheck whether the kid got an A or an F. Didn't matter. She got paid to show up. Now, she was a dedicated teacher, and she did her best. But the truth was, it didn't matter what the outcome was. She still got her paycheck. Different economy. Say yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, some of you have left that economy and said, I'm going over here. I want freedom. Some of you go, I wish I'd like to go back there. I want security. <laughs> and really, the choice she made when you got into this economy was, I want freedom. And if you want freedom, you have to pay the price, which is learn like you're being paid to learn. And that's what my mother taught me. My mother said is, is that make your life about learning. And then why don't you build a business that you just go out and teach what you learn? Then you can fulfill your father's need to be your own boss. And that was where I was raised from. It's like I got that gift. My dad said own it. My mom says teach it. Teach what you learn and go make money from that. And that's how you know, I've evolved into where I am. And one of the things, my, I got nine brothers and sisters, more than just a hobby for my father. <laughs> <laughs> We called it his workbench. <laughs> I remember my last brother came. We're like, oh, my God, no, Mom, that's enough. No more, there's no more room. <laughs> we had like a 1,600-square-foot home on the south side of Chicago. And we, we, my dad was a creative guy. What he did was is he took the basement and he built stalls in the basement. <laughs> so there was just a board, and then you had a bed and a dresser, and we each had our stall. It was like we were horses going in at night. <laughs> but we could decorate it any way we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, you know. And I remember laying down there in bed and said, I'm going to learn so much that I could go teach it and get out of this stall. <laughs> and, but my mom would wake us up. She, she homeschooled us until we were in third grade. Then she put us into the school system. So we got the first three years with her. And, so, and she did that because it was like groups of kids being born. Okay, here's another student, okay, you know. <laughs> and she just birthed students. I think that's what she was all about, you know. God bless her. So she would, she would teach us from flashcards. That was her method. You know, she cu- cutting edge at the time. She would, we'd wake up and she'd have a flashcard. Wake up, Joey. <laughs> like, Whoa, mama. You know, and it would be like two plus two. Four, yeah, the good boy. You get to eat. <laughs> so when you're raised that way, you start to find what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So what works for me is taking one idea at a time and just dwelling on it. Like just thinking one thing, don't get overwhelmed with it, and just work with it. So what I chose to do is just create cards, decks of cards. And so instead of writing a book, people say, write a book. I say, well, I'll, I'll think I'll take all I know and put them on individual cards. Because I studied Milton Erickson. He's a hypnotherapist. And I've studied Richard Bandler and Grinder and some of the greatest language pattern designers. And then what I did was I was able to put them all into real estate things. So I created a deck called uh, Magic Words That Negotiate Agreements, Magic Words That Overcome Resistance, Magic Words That Get Referrals, and Magic Words That Motivate Me. There's four different decks of cards that I've created uh, that, so what, t- about 200, was four times 52? 208. Thank you. 
<laughs> that was very good. <laughs> that was mortgage math. Real estate is some, it's high, it's a lot. <laughs> but, uh, so, so 208 different language patterns. Now, there's no way that you could learn 208 language patterns in the course of a season. It's a commitment to life that you're constantly looking to improve your ability to improve upon the silence. And so I take a card a day, and I take that card, and I just stick it in my pocket, and during the course of the day, I know if I look at it once, accidental, twice, coincidental, third time, the pattern starts to appear, and over and over and over again. And that's what I'd love to see us do as a company, is over the next three to five years, become the most skilled communicators, because that's what makes the difference. What makes the difference is when we sit down at the table and the outcome that occurs here, and then you walk away and you got the listing and everyone's going, how did you get it? And you go, my tongue. <laughs> you know, I speak, I speak in the direction of the outcome that I want. And that would be the greatest gift that I could give to you is, is the gift of language. And uh, I've been gifted that through my teachers. And whenever you're given a gift, your responsibility is to make sure that you give that gift away. And so... I would really encourage you to look at that, r really doing that. And, and this is an example of some of the things that you can you could look at. Um, I'll just give you, a, uh, here, I'll show you. This is, this is a, a simple technique. There's so many things I could, let's see, I want to go backwards on that. There we go. So uh, just look at this as a, as a method of helping people think through a problem. So when you bring an offer to a person, and I, by the way, we actually don't call it offer. What I would actually encourage you to do is, from this moment forward, when you say to your seller, I have an offer on the property, automatically the mind says what? Count, yeah, how much and what else? Offer means there's going to be a counter offer. Offer means negotiate right now. So what I really want you to look at is this concept of when you call up your seller, you would say to them, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, uh, the Millers who looked at your home last night have agreed to buy it. <coughs> we have an agreement that they want to buy it. Are you following me on this? Mm -hmm. Everyone say agreed to buy. Agreed to buy. Now just start with a simple concept like that. When you tell someone you have an offer, instead of saying offer, call it agreed to buy. And that's a very different frame of reference. Well, what did they offer? Well, they've agreed to buy it for... $220,000. Oh, no, no, we want two sixty. Oh, so what I hear you saying is you want to buy it back. <laughs> Not counteroffer, because they've already bought it. So you want to change the numbers and buy it back? Are you tracking with me on that? Yeah. So, and it's called reframing. And that's what we do a, a lot with our, our language skills, is help people get a different perspective on their behavior. It's not counteroffer, it's buy back. Because in effect, that's what's happening. Say yes? yes. And then they say, well, no, 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 we just want, to, we want more. Well, as soon as you touch it, what you're actually doing is buying the house for that amount. Let's see if it's a good buy. Does this help you make your five, six, and seven come true? And then you, you talk about the five, six, and seven. Would you buy this house if you want? Now, if you uh, let them agree to buy it, does it get it? And you keep that context there. Because most people don't recognize the consequences of their behavior. Yes or no? How many, how many have ever been with a client where uh, six months later they're going, I should have took that first offer? Yeah. And usually th that's the truth. And what your responsibility, if you can just, if you can just put this into your, your mind, and just if you can hold on to this concept, your responsibility is to allow people to feel uncomfortable and remain comfortable. You see, when you say to somebody, the Johnsons have agreed to buy your home for 220, oh, no, no, no. Now, that may be uncomfortable for you to say that because it makes them uncomfortable. So what you do is, here, we can do is counteroffer. And really what you're trying to do is relieve your discomfort. Are you following me on this? You're making it about you as opposed to standing firmly in their discomfort. I can feel your pain, and I also know that if we go with what they've agreed to buy it for, the five, six, and seven come true. And you talk about the five, six, and seven. And it's really uncomfortable for them, but you remain comfortable while they're uncomfortable. What I found is the most skilled consultants know how to stand in the discomfort while other people around them are uncomfortable, as opposed to breaking down 
and then trying to make you feel comfortable. Okay, well, I'll do my best. I promise you, I'll keep marketing the daylights out of this thing, and I'll do everything to make your life better. I promise you. I won't sleep tonight, but I will continue to spend money on advertising. And, <laughs> and how, do you, how do you feel now? And then you walk out, you son of a bitch. I can't believe it. And then you got this whole story about them, but it was really you in an ability to stand straight up and allow somebody to experience their discomfort. It's a gift that when you do that. How many of you can hear the insight in that? How many of you, how many of you can do this tonight with your spouse? <laughs> we got something uncomfortable to talk about, but it's okay because I'm going to be comfortable with you being uncomfortable. <laughs> so, so as you go through the, the cards, you're going to find that uh, one of the most important things you'll ever learn how to do is your ability to tell people what you do to create value for them. And if we could get this language embedded into our community here at Tarbell and just say that what we do is we consult, we negotiate, and we oversee the transactional details. That's what we do. So what makes you different? Well, it's my consulting skills. It's my negotiating skills. It's my capacity to oversee the transactional details. So if somebody says, what do you do? Well, it's not lock boxes, signs, ads, MLS, because that's everybody. Of course we do all of that. But what makes me different is, is my capacity to consult, my capacity to negotiate, and my capacity to oversee the transactional details. Now, when you look at that, you want to really have great language for each one of them. As your consultant, as your consultant, you may notice, I'm going to ask you profound, insightful questions. Maybe you'll even notice the type of questions that the typical agent or lender might not ever take the risk in asking. You may have remembered me saying that. Experience shows a skilled consultant like me will ask probing, intelligent questions because discovering what is really important to you is really important to me. That is very powerful language because it's all about them. So somebody says, well, what do you mean as a consultant? You say, well, as a consultant, as your consultant, uh, you may notice. Now, the, there's lots of language patterns in there. The words you may notice, everyone say that? You may notice. It means a couple of different things. It means you may not but I'm also giving you permission to. Go ahead and notice. Go ahead, you may notice. Hear the language ambiguity there? Yeah. yeah, so it means several things. I'll ask you profound, insightful questions. And when I just say to you, watch this. Hey, I'd like to ask you a few profound, insightful questions. What happens when I say that? You start to what? You start to become present. You go, what are they? As opposed to, hey, before we get started, let me just tell you all about me. You, you disappear. You want people to appear. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, but maybe. If you say, you will notice, watch people, they'll reject you, and they'll go, no, I won't notice. I didn't notice. But if you take it away, say, hey, maybe you'll notice the type of questions that the typical agent salesperson would never take the risk in asking, and you're pointing everything in that direction that you want them to avoid. The word risk is over here. So one, two, three... Typical agent, risky, risky, risky. <laughs> Experience shows a skilled consultant like me. Say, skilled consultant like me. Skilled now say the words like me. Like now me. tell the person next to you what the two meanings are. <laughs> Can you hear it? Did you hear it? It's embedded in there. A skilled consultant like me. Like me, what you're saying is, like me, and then similar to me. Now, the conscious mind can only handle seven, five, six, seven bits of information simultaneously before it goes on tilt. It just goes a little overwhelmed. I'm getting close to that with you guys right now. <laughs> Some of you have already gone on tilt. You're going, I'll just take what I can get. <laughs> But just today, why don't you just today, why don't you just see how many times you could use the words like me so it has double meaning? Uh, you're probably like me, you want to, like me, want to go get some lunch. <laughs> double me. So just kind of see if you can practice that with a, a little bit today. And so a skilled consultant like me will ask probing intelligent questions because discovering what's really important to you is really important to me. Boy, if you could just get that language down. So somebody says, what do you do? Well, I have three roles. What are my roles? Number one? Number two? And number three? 
So what do I mean by a consultant? Well, you're going to know. It says you're a consultant. I'm going to ask you some profound, insightful questions. Maybe you'll even notice they're the type of questions that the typical real estate agent would never take the risk in asking. Uh, and experience shows that a skilled consultant like me will ask probing, thought-provoking questions uh, to discover what's important to you because discovering what's important to you is important to me. Now, how many of you can hear I got mastery of this? Yes or no? Yes. Now, you think I've practiced it yes. Yeah, over and over and over again. So I can stand up in front of you and say, you know what? As your consultant, I'm going to ask you um, some very thought-provoking questions. And they're the type of questions that experience shows that the typical real estate agent would never, ever take the risk in asking. Are you following me on this? Yeah. I can take any cadence to it because I own it. And what I find is, is that as you go from amateur to pro, that's what you're mission is. Amateurs wing it. They go show up at kettlebell camp and they can't get it over their head more than three times. And they've got this beautiful muscle, but they can't do anything with it. How many of you have seen people that have all the tools, but they don't do anything with it? Yeah, because they don't put in the practice. You know, and so I really encourage you to really look at that. Look, look at this. I love this. I'm your negotiator. Would you all say that? Are you not? Is that what they're paying you to do? Yes. Is consult and negotiate. You know? And so, eh, I should say, like me, you'll probably believe it's in your best interest to have a skilled, experienced, and focused negotiator on your team. That's called an obvious statement. Imagine what it will be like to have a person who deals with your money to critically examine the accuracy of the underlying assumptions that are being relied upon. What you'll quickly notice as I'm your negotiator for you is, is that I will skillfully articulate the strengths and the weaknesses of suggestions of other agents and lenders proposed. As a result, you will sooner or later become aware that my negotiating skills alone are worth every penny you pay me. Boy, that's a powerful statement. <laughs> now, somebody recently, I got a, a beautiful message from a person who says, Joe, I didn't have your language master, but I had an email come across my desk. And a person says, I'm interviewing three agents. Could you tell me what makes you different? And so all I did was take your consult, negotiate, and oversee the transactional language right out of your workbook. And I just sent it in the email, and they called me up, and they hired me. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine, Sam. He's in Washington, D.C. He's, he's one of our training. He's raising his Joe, Joe, over here. I go, what's up, Sam? He goes, great thing happened. I went on a listing presentation. The guy was blind. I just took out the main event workbook, opened it up, and I just gave it to him 100%. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd suggest to some of you right now that it would be okay if you went in with your scripts. And even if you said to your client, you know what, there's some such important things that I want to say to you that I wrote them down so I can remember them. Are you, tra are you tracking with me on this? It's, that, that's what a pro would do. An amateur is concerned with not looking good. A pro is concerned with delivering the right message no matter what it looks like. And so as I put this up here, I know that it's kind of going into your consciousness, but there's a level of commitment you make to doing this. So, and I love this. I, I'm going to oversee all your transactional details because every transaction has 100 pieces of paper requiring upwards of 43 signatures and initials. Every I must be dotted, every T must be crossed because making a, making a mistake could be very costly to you. Every transaction has 100 to 150 phone calls alone, and each one of them is loaded with critical details. I mean, how does it make you feel to know that there are 43 different people from 14 different industries that get involved during the seven stages of your transaction? Right now, how many of you feel a little overwhelmed? <laughs> well, somebody says, what do you mean the details? You'd say, well, here it is. There's about 100 pieces of paper on every transaction. 43 different signatures and initials on every transaction. You miss one of them, it's a critical mistake. There's going to be 100 to 150 phone calls, all of them loaded with really important details. Hey, how does it make you feel to know that there's 43 people from 14 different industries that get involved in the seven stages of your transaction? Somebody has to oversee all of that. And that's what I do. I consult and negotiate and oversee the transactional details. So if we can get really good at just explaining that to people, watch how quickly you differentiate. Because you know what most typical real estate agents are doing? Is explaining their advertising campaign, their internet strategy. And it's all important, but what differentiates you is your ability to consult, your ability to negotiate, your ability to oversee transactional details. And I've worked my whole life trying to put language around where people see your most value. You know.
and where they see your value is in, your ability to ask questions, represent their money, and oversee the transactional details. Because when it all shakes out, what really matters is, did you ask them the right questions? Did you represent their money like a pit bull? <laughs> and did you really take care of the transactional details? How many have ever had another agent involved in a transaction where they had no skills to take care of the transactional details? Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that, that they actually get into the business and they don't have the structure in place to handle the 150 phone calls, they don't have the structure in place to handle the 100 piece of paper, the 43 different people, and then you end up doing their work. You, you, sometimes you, get a, you get a contract on one of your listings, you go, oh boy, this is double the work. Yeah, And you know that, because that's the truth. So what I would love you to do is when you go in and you sit with a client, say to them, here's what I do. You know, I consult, I negotiate, and I oversee. Let me put more language to it. Now, I could go on in each one of those for about 20 minutes. I've got language that really expands. Sometimes you just need a little bit of language. Sometimes you need a lot of language, depending on where your level of trust is. What I found is if you know a person's five, six, and seven up front, you do less talking about you because all you need to say is, is here's what makes me different, my ability to consult, negotiate, and oversee the transactional details. You want me to spend a little bit of time sharing with you what each one of those roles is? And most people are going, no, I trust you. Because it's about the five, six, and seven. Yeah. And so somebody says, well, what's your advertising campaign? Uh, my advertising campaign is about getting your five, six, and seven to come true. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful with that because then you start to, if you start to explain your advertising campaign to them, they're amateurs. They don't know how to judge if it's effective or not. You're actually saying, what do you think, doctor? Um, uh, what are you going to use for surgery on me? And the doctor, well, I'm going to use this scalp. And you go, oh, no, I don't like that scalp. Well, are you going to use a larger <laughs> one? You, you're, you're actually empowering an amateur to give you advice. See, the, the amateur would go in and say, well, let me tell you about my marketing campaign as if the home seller is qualified to even know if it's any good. So if somebody says, well, what is your advertising campaign? I'm going to do as much as I can in order to make your dream come true and then just focus on the five, six, and seven. Of course, we're going to do all the traditional things, but the most important thing is, is I'm going to consult, I'm going to negotiate and oversee the transactional details, and we'll do all, and keep the focus on them, not on you. Boy, I wish we had more time. Have you gotten some good value today? Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Good, good. Excellent, good. Uh, uh. So let me ju let me, I'm just going to wrap up our time. I, I brought with me a... a a set of some of our tapes and I do this because I really want you guys to get this this train I really want you to embed this deep into your conscious mind so I put together 17 CDs six DVDs uh, I've got all the scripts all of the tools are all inside a 234 page workbook for you if we could all just put one in our car and just listen to this over and over and over and over and over again then the next time I come back we can take it up another level you know, because I would like to just keep escalating this conversation with you. And so you can come back and right now you don't even know what you don't even know until you start to go practice this. And then we'll come back and we can take it to a whole nother level. And then uh, as, a, as, a, as a little bonus, I'll give away a set of our, our cards uh, to each person who gets a, get this. It's $199. If you don't have $199, that's why you want to get it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. If, if you need a little extra help on that, um, if you need a little extra help on that, we'll take three payments of $67 and spread it out over 90 days. And if you don't like it at the end of 90 days, just give it back to me. I'm right, our offices are in Carlsbad. Uh, you, we come up, we have people from our team that come up here. We pick it up from you if you want to, and we'll give you back all your money, no questions asked. I mean, that's where I am. Uh, my intention right here is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you <laughs> <laughs> that you'd gladly introduce everyone to me all right so thank you very much you guys thank you very much good good best you